In this episode, we will be riding on the Gobi Desert Road to catch a glimpse of the endangered wild horses in their natural sanctuary. Be enthralled by the ghost city, petrified woods, and unforgettable colorful rock formations. It's going to get wild on the Gobi Desert Road. Now, we have left the comforts of the town from Tingmusar to Chitai, and we're going to head further up north where this is Nature Reserve Kalamaili, and there's beautiful Schwatsky horses and wild asses that roam freely. And there are fossils from ancient sea creatures to prehistoric trees to be found, not forgetting Wu Tai Chen, where it's a colorful, rocky formation. I'll tell you, you have to buckle up for a good time with me as we head on adventure on the road. Oh. Xinjiang means new frontier. With only 4.3% of the land here habitable, the inhospitable desert reigns supreme. Most of northern Xinjiang is semi-arid, including desert and semi-desert, which means the climate is extreme. Winter temperatures dip to a frigid minus 40 degrees, while in summer, they can be a scorching 50 degrees. The bare bones survival kit that we brought includes tons of water, tubes of sunblock, umbrellas, and shade. Once in, you are on your own. Both a scary and thrilling notion. You know, so many times when you go out traveling, you have a list where to go, what to do. Perhaps you want to see ocean, you want to see the forest. But just sitting here, just looking at the blue sky and the vast expanse of this plain, just tells me this is enough. The largest desert on the Asian continent, the Gobi sits in both China and Mongolia. Gobi means waterless place in Mongolian. Comprised of barren expanse of gravel plains and rocky outcrops, this is totally unlike the sandy Sahara that I had in mind. Besides being a treasure trove of fossil skeletons and petrified wood, it's home to many exotic creatures. This might look like a random piece of rock right but i tell you it is not now this over here combines with this and it joins up to this and all the way you can see that this is actually part of a massive huge pine tree that probably existed during the prehistoric time Do you know it, this is actually living proof that this entire landscape was just green lush and fertile and gorgeous and Wow, dinosaurs used to roam. I can just imagine. Today it just stands as, as a witness to the stories of the times that we could never go back to. But, you know, everything is impermanent, right? It changes. The best environment for preservation is an isolated and dry desert. Between 100 and 200 million years, worth of dinosaur bones and Jurassic trees have established themselves here. But it's not for everyone. Traveling can be costly, with the rental of a vehicle and driver at 200 USD per day. Remember to pack your sleeping bag, but take refuge in the car when a storm hits, as winds are ferocious here. The only way of getting out here is really by your own car. I mean, there are no tour buses, and there's nothing to buy for miles and miles. So you have to prepare your own lunch as well, which is what... 
We did. Hello, boys. Hey, 大家都在吃啦。哇，你上了南根咸菜。Lunch time now. 好。大家好，西红柿。Come on, crew. Let's have some food. 我这是全部都是本地产的，对吗？这大辣椒。Or tomatoes. I love these. 咸菜。<laughs> 还有鸡蛋。哇，很丰富。嗯，对我黄瓜很爽。哎 ，Come on, man. 好吃吗？你们通常就是。一年出来玩几次呢？想出来就出来了吗？想出来就出来，嗯。一般一百多次有呢。一百多次，哇！新疆有这么多好天气，对吗？对，不错不错。Savor some outdoor dining by parking your car just about anywhere. We feast on a largely Central Asian diet influenced by the nomadic lifestyle. The naan bread might be simple, but great company in an epic landscape like this might only come once in a lifetime. We just checked out the archaeological fossils back there, and now we're back on the road. We've got 30 more kilometers, and we're going to head to Tsitai's ghost city. And that one, I'm really excited to see what it's like, because I heard it's beautiful. Oh, the Gobi is such a huge, vast desert, and we're so impressed. Our group has been taking about a thousand pictures. <laughs> it's amazing what, when you can see nothing, it just brings you so much joy, because there's just too much things in the city. I realized quickly when I knew I should that the whole world was made up of this brotherhood of man. But whatever that means. And so I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real high and I scream for the top of my lungs, oh, what's going on? And I say, everybody, hey, hey, hey. After 20 kilometers, we're a little surprised when the car in front of us stops. It seems like nature has other plans. We've been bouncing on the road, now everyone stopped off. Now what's going on? The road is already gone, we're going to go to 10 km. We're not going to go anywhere. Yes, we're not going to go anywhere. Oh, my God. So we can't go to Chichai's ghost city because... Yeah, the the roads are really bad. We were like bouncing. That's why it's really hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Known as Ghost City, these landforms are formed of layers of different sedimentary rock. During the Earth's plate tectonic movement, it was exposed, creating mysterious looking labyrinths. Listen. Can you hear that? It's the sound of the wind. Locals don't call this place Ghost City for nothing. I mean, it sounds a bit spooky, but these ferocious winds have been picking up sand for centuries upon centuries upon centuries, and, and that's how they shape these rocks. Look at that. It, it looks kind of sturdy, but I can just pluck one off right there. Look at that. It's so easily crumbled. And this is all sculpted by Mother Nature through her hands of time, just weathered. Not much can exist in this place. Head eastwards from Tai Go City, shaking off the eerie vibes to kickstart an extraordinary adventure of a two hump furry kind. Giddy up, horsey! We're going onwards and forwards, and we're going to be getting on the Gobi Desert Road looking for some awesome, spectacular desert creatures. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for that to happen. Oh, it's going to get wild! This were the heroes of the ancient Silk Road. We're visiting a Kazakh nomad family in Mule, who've been herding camels for almost 200 years. This certainly feels like the adventure of a lifetime for me. Uh, I mean, there's no other way to enjoy the Gobi Desert Road except being on the back of the pickup truck. This is my director. Hi. And this is our uh, director, Sis. Of course, we cannot forget the man who's uh, most important for the shoot. Yes. Okay. 
The tourist industry is still at an infancy, so this is not a ready-made package. But given time and planning, a local tour operator can make this work for you. It's hard to get your bearings right in this desolate area, so only go for local professional drivers from Mule. It is fantastic! Oh my goodness, finally! Oh, they're beautiful. You can really smell them. You know, we've been sitting in the back of the pickup truck and it was super fun. And really, it's part of the journey. I mean, we were like, okay, this is enough. We don't actually really need to see camels. Well, I'm just lying. But, you know, that, that whole process was just beautiful. I really recommend you get a pickup, an SUV. But right now, <laughs> this is just amazing. <gasps> Are you going to cry? I saw them running. Oh, they're so mythical. Look at that. That they are. That guy owns the camel. The guy with the cap, that's his camels. Let's come closer. Oh, come on. Oh, good, no. Good, good, okay. Balance, move back. Oh, balance, go. As the mother calls like her young crying. to turn back, and an ominous impending rain looms. I reflect on how caravans with 200 camels took nine months to cross the desert back in the old days. Coming up next, we head to Kalamaili Nature Reserve to mingle with the endangered wild horses that are even rarer than the pandas and learn about animal conservation. This is Mr. Chu and he's a gem of a find. We found him online and he's brilliant because he knows everything there is to know about Kalamaili Nature Reserve and he so graciously agreed to take us along and show us around in his turf. And we arranged to meet not too far from just up the street, so I'm excited to see what he's like. See the license plate 6371. I think that's him. That should be Mr. Chu. That's him waiting on the side. Is it okay? Can I look at that? That is Chu Xian Sheng. That's him. That's him. Great. Let's go and say hi. Come meet. There. Oh, he's right on time. We're on a mission to see the Schwarzkopf horses. Some 30,000 years ago, this was their original habitat. Rarer than a giant panda, with less than 1,000 roaming the earth, and most of them kept in foreign zoos, you feel like it's a real honor to see them in their natural habitat. This is the last species of wild horse left in the world, named after Nikola Schwarzkopf, a Russian explorer who first described the horse in 1881. They disappeared from China in the 60s. The victims of ruthless poaching. What's the name of this highway? Uh, it's called National Road 216. Where does it start? Where it's it? from Artai to Urumqi. Uh -huh. We just now inside the Kalamani Angulate Nature Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there life around here? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, the wild horses. Uh, release, yeah, release, yeah, the releasing. Releasing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, plant, plant, uh, wild donkey. And the wild donkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? And the uh, garlic there yeah. and the uh, wolf. And what else can you do there? Can you, I mean, besides seeing these beautiful animals? Like, yeah, you can go working, uh, hiking, uh, and uh, for camping. Uh, camping yeah, as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm so uh, glad you are my yeah. guide. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I cannot yeah. wait. But first, Mr. Chu wants to show me a miracle of a natural heart wonder in the desert that soothes and naturally heals. Yeah. Look. Okay. We're here. What is this? Uh, Guhai hot springs. There's a hot spring in the desert. Really? How did you discover it? It was discovered by the local 
Hasidic people. Uh -huh. uh, when they use it, they uh -huh. found their skins becoming better on the hearse. Oh. And it looks like a resort, actually. It's really a resort. And a lot of visitors coming here to enjoy the hot springs. A mere two and a half hour drive from Umchi, lots of visitors from the capital city check in here for the weekend. The accommodation is relatively affordable, but we have an important mission at hand. It's nearly sundown, but we have no time to stay. Oh, it's getting late, but so I need to get back on the road. Thanks for showing me this place. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> you're very kind. The Wild Horse Research Center is not open to the public. However, if you're serious and responsible enough, you can ride in for a special permit. Mr. Chu tells me that the center has developed into the largest of its kind in Asia. The survival rate of the wild horse has risen from 45 to 89 percent. I'm now just one step closer to seeing these creatures. Center for the monetary uh, uh, ah, So all these guys this are doing the, the good work. Hi, how are you? Hi. 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 This is the place where uh, we introduced the uh, uh, Swazi horse, and uh, this is quite a big area, and uh, we got several like water around. So this is like a water rich area, uh -huh. and the uh, vegetation is pretty good. So um, compared to other places, uh -huh. and this is pretty far from the road, so uh, so this horse is safe from those like uh, people's uh, harassment. Uh -huh. Well, we're hoping to see some of these yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. You, get <laughs> we, we, you know, he has binoculars, but I, I'm sure like we're in good hands. Uh, so uh -huh. we hope to see some wild horses. Right, right. Just ask Mr. Chu. He know everything. <laughs> Dusk and dawn make for stunning photographs in this area, but I have only one thing on my mind. My imminent encounter with a Schwatzky horse. These creatures are seriously endangered, and their future rests heavily on the shoulders of Mr. Chu and his colleagues. In 1985, the Schwarzky Horses Reintroduction Program was initiated to coincide with the creation of Xinjiang Wild Horse Breeding Center. At 14,000 square kilometers, that's almost the size of the Bahamas, this is one of the largest nature reserves in China. So I have some serious doubts about spotting any of the horses. Where there is water, there is life. One of the best ways to study and trace any animal is to head for its drinking source. Kalamaili Nature Reserve is a paradise for many exotic animals, but in this vastness, it's just so hard to gawk at them. But I feel like a spy with a front row seat. It is exciting to see these animals, apparently without a care in the world. Day and night, their movements are meticulously recorded as scientists try to decipher just what motivates them. So this is the video that we just took um, at the water hole, and you can see that having a camera trap is really great because the horses don't know that you're there. You can see a lot of the horses' behavior right now. You can see the horse in the back is lying down, playing in the mud. Um, and the entire herd has come in and they're all drinking. The pictures and videos fueled my anticipation. According to Mr. Chu, the horses have a come few up. favorite sports of their own. And that's come where up. we're headed to. Ah, and some other people hold on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I'm not quite sure if 
if you're comfortable with this distance. But for now, it seems okay. You can see over there. There's a little baby. See the baby? It's small. They're so small. Their necks are so thick. Can we come closer? Let me get comfortable. Okay, it's a teeny bit, Mom. Hey, hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Mom, Mom. Mom, Mom. Okay. 我们真的现在有没有五百米？现在五百米，九十三米，九不九十三米 ，OK OK。Ninety three meters。那个公马先生他在看大家，你看他现在在看大家，我们全部人都在后面，我们全部人都在后面，他现在在看怎么样？嗯，是。他现在动了，他们全部都跑了，对吗？赶紧抓吧。啊。But here we have a relationship with them. You know, they're observing us. They're moving according to, you know, what we're doing, and and they're really like noticing. You know, they're giving us attention and awareness. And now, they they've all gone. They're now gone, right? Now, 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 对对对对对，羊非常警觉。There's gazelles all out there. It's like a manic chase. The moment they hear the car come in, they run as fast as they can, and then they sort of suddenly stop, and then they're kind of just parallel, just ahead of us. 两公里以外。The black-tailed gazelle is highly elusive, but even more difficult to spot is the speedy and notoriously untamable Asiatic wild ass. This endangered animal, more horse than donkey, can race at speeds of up to 70 kilometers per hour. After driving around for four hours, we almost gave up hope. These creatures run for their lives when they pick up an unfamiliar sound even three kilometers away. But something fortuitous happens. We chance upon a crossing. For all the green messages about the protection of our great biodiversity, the urgency now feels truly personal. Seeing the Schwarzki horses and other endangered animals has been a truly unforgettable experience for everyone in the crew. Coming up next, we visit the Wild Horse Breeding Center for an unforgettable close encounter and bow to a kaleidoscope of geological greatness in Wu Taicheng. Located on the National Highway 216, a two and a half hour drive from Urumqi is the nerve center of the conservation efforts. The 600 hectare breeding center doubles up as an ecotourism center. Its success rests with a scheme by which the horses are released in stages, from a smaller enclosure to a larger one, and finally into the wild. With temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees in winter here, the horses are released in spring to acclimatize and learn how to search for food and water. So beautiful. Oh my gosh. We're so close. Hello. The short ski horses are the world's last remaining species of wild horse. They're more stockily built compared to the domesticated horses. They could not make up their features standing from a distance in the nature reserve. So this is a unique opportunity to have that chance. These horses oh pack power in their 300 kilogram faintly striped bodies and legs. And here they're unbelievably affectionate towards humans. Though I prefer them running wild, breeding them is necessary for the survival of the species. We bid farewell to our furry friends and make our way towards Wu Taicheng that promises to be a kaleidoscope of geographical magnificence. It literally means five colored city and I'm really excited at the thought of seeing this enigmatic landscape. How long have we got before we reach Wu Taicheng? Nearly 60 kilometers. Yeah? Uh -huh. I feel like about an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. The landscape is really changing. So don't close your eyes. We feel like almost the only people in this part of Xinjiang. As the further we head out, the more scantily populated it becomes. The roads are smooth though not well paved. All in all, the conditions are ideal for true off-road adventure. I enter a space of magnificent red earth with coal that has been colored by nothing but solar power. In the early 20th century, people in Lupnor discovered a similar rock formation and called it Yardan, which means deep mound in Uyghur. It's a term that's still used today by local and foreign geologists and archaeologists. 
God or nature for this. Besides the strong winds, there's rain. When it comes, it's torrential and brings flash floods, eroding the loose earth and fashioning this unique landform. Here, you have an unobstructed view with little human activity. Dust and dawn make for the most stunning shots. Factor in time on the road before it gets dark, or stay in the years one kilometers from this site, all part of Xinjiang's nomadic charm. We've experienced the wild beauty of the camels and horses, been humbled by this immense diversity of the landscape. From the ghost city to the kaleidoscope of colors here in Wu Taicheng, this part of Xinjiang is simply stunning. And we'll be heading up deeper north on our adventure. So see you on the road. It's going to get wild on the Gobi Desert Road. Now, we have left the comforts of the town from Jingmuzar to Chitai, and we're going to head further up north where this is a rocky outcrop. This is totally unlike the sandy Sahara that I had in mind. Besides being a treasure trove of fossil skeletons and petrified wood, it's home to many exotic creatures. This might look like a random piece of rock, right? But I tell you, it is not. Now, this over here combines with this, and it joins up to this. And all the way, you can see that. This is actually part of a massive, huge pine tree that probably existed during the prehistoric time. Do you know, it, this is actually living proof that this entire landscape was just green leaves. While in summer, they can be a scorching 50 degrees. The bare bones survival kit that we brought includes tons of water, tubes of sunblock, umbrellas, and shade. Once in, you are on your own, both a scary and thrilling notion. You know, so many times when you go out traveling, you have a list where to go, what to do. Perhaps you want to see ocean, you want to see the forest. Just sitting here, just looking at the blue sky and the vast expanse of this plain, just tells me this is enough. The largest desert on the Asian continent, the Gobi sits in both China and Mongolia. Gobi means waterless place in Mongolian, comprised of barren expanse of gravel plains. In this episode, we will be riding on the Gobi Desert Road to catch a glimpse of the endangered wild horses in their natural sanctuary. Be enthralled by the ghost city, petrified woods, and unforgettable colorful rock formations.
is nature reserve Kalamaili and there's beautiful Schwatsky horses and wild asses that roam freely. And there are fossils from ancient sea creatures to prehistoric trees to be found. Not forgetting Wu Tai Chen, where it's a colorful, rocky formation. I'll tell you, you have to buckle up for a good time with me as we head on adventure on the road. Oh. Xinjiang means new frontier. With only 4.3% of the land here habitable, the inhospitable desert reigns supreme. Most of northern Xinjiang is semi-arid, including desert and semi-desert, which means the climate is extreme. Winter temperatures dip to a frigid minus 40 degrees.